I started talking about how to um, engage a new dawn. How to engage a new dawn. You know, so we started by talking about uh, if you want to engage a new dawn this year, you will need to have a new and a renewed vision. A new and what? A renewed vision. And we talk about that. And then after that, I went further to talk about if a new approach. That you will need to have a new approach as we progress in this year of a new dawn. If you have a new approach to doing things, you will engage a new dawn in your life. Because sometimes when a new dawn happens, we are even unaware that it is done. And then we started from there to talk about what again? A new perspective. So if you must engage a new dawn, you must be, you must develop a mindset that is not so rigid to one perspective. So you need to open up to other perspectives. Because God may decide to come from where you never expected. Hallelujah. And now the scripture said that God does not win by multitude. So God, it suggests to us that God can decide to meet with a man in a very, very uh, unique way. A way that is not conventional to you. And that's the kind of God that we serve. Praise the Lord somebody. So I'd like you to to be open-hearted this year, to open up your spirit, like we were talking about this morning. God can choose to come in a different direction. God is God, and we cannot box him. We cannot put him in a box. We cannot kick him to the corner. He is God. Anywhere you hide him, he will sneak out, <laughs> because he is God. Praise the Lord, somebody. You cannot, you cannot box God to a corner. So, also, after talking about a new perspective, we last we talk about what? A new spirit. A new spirit. The Bible to, telling us that Joshua and Caleb, one of the reasons why they saw differently was because they had a new spirit. They had a new spirit. That was why their perspective was completely different from the norm, from what was conventional. They saw something different. They saw something different because they have a new spirit. This thing called spirit is so much into me. Praise the Lord, somebody. I, I am so much interested in, in opening up what is called the spirit or the spirit realm. Because anything that you cannot touch, anything that you cannot really handle physically is something that you should give importance to. Especially if that thing is impacting on your life. You cannot actually sue that thing to court. Hello? <laughs> I am suing this demon to court. You can only sue the demon to a spiritual court of heaven. And you deal with them. So, but physically there is no government that will listen to you if you are talking about suing a spirit. That is why there is no physical laboratory that can detect a demonized person. Someone that is under the influence of either the Holy Spirit or the influence of a demonic spirit. You cannot be able to detect it from the laboratory. Yes, they were able to detect COVID. They detected uh, influenza. They detect, they've detected, they also detected cholera. So many years ago, they detected uh, malaria, and they are still detected, detected polio, so many of those things, and vaccines were created for them. But there are no physical vaccines for uh, any spiritual thing, spiritual occurrence. You can only deal with spiritual things from spiritual perspective, using spiritual instruments, uh, you know, that God has made available to us. Jesus, talking to Nicodemus, after, uh, in that John chapter 3 uh, discourse, Jesus said to him, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That meaning that which can be interacted, connected with in the physical 
is in the physical. He said, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, do not be surprised of what I'm talking to you about. Marvel not. Marvel not. He said, he said because the wind blows, blows where it leads. We, know, we don't know where it's coming from. We don't know where it's going to. He says, so is everyone that is born of the spirit. So spiritual dimensions must be approached from the spiritual dimension. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. This year of a new dawn, make up your mind to connect with the Spirit of God so that you will have a new spirit in, any, in approaching anything this year in the name of Jesus. Today I will be, stop, I will be rounding up this uh, discussion and then next week we'll be talking about... Uh, okay, today I'll be talking about second to the last one. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll be talking about second to the last one. So... Today I'll be talking about a new diligence. A new what? Diligence. A new diligence. Very, very important. A wise man once said that the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. Hello, sir. The only place where success will come before work is in the dictionary. Because they are arranged alphabetically. Hello? So, in real life, it's not so. It's not so. We all have comfort zones. Are we together now? We all have comfort zones. And we are not ready, we are not willing to relinquish our comfort zone for anything. Because of the word comfort. Every human being loves comfort. And I thank God for God's servant this morning talking about taking risk. Going to flow along this line. Now, to enter a new dawn, however, some great deal of effort is required on our part. I want to just talk this morning and I want you to listen to me and including all our brethren and those who are listening to me all over the world. Hear me. It is true that it's our year of a new dawn. It is true that God is the one that brings about the breaking of, it, of the day. But God will need you in this year of a new dawn to Put in a little bit more effort to make the most out of a new dawn. There will always be a need for our diligence and for our favor. Now, God is committed to blessing the work of our hands, but our hands need to find a work. Are we, are we, are we together now? God is committed to bless the work of our hand, but our hand needs to find the work. Some time ago, when I just came to Canada, I was working full time. I've never done that in my life. I've always been in full time ministry. But I have learned the missionary way of breaking through in a territory. That you do not just come into a place and just, and just, and just expect manna to fall from heaven. <laughs> you understand? You have to pay your bills. You have to do that. And many people have asked me, why, are you, why do you choose to work? I said, because work is not a sin. Work is not a sin. It is not. And so, I committed myself to getting what I needed in this territory, physically, so that I can be physically relevant and I can also be spiritually what? Really, because spiritually I was already prepared coming into this spiritual space of this, of, this, of this country. I was already prepared. All I just needed is for the physical preparation. At some point, I, I can still remember when we met. That time we met, um, Sister Monica, that the time we met, I was attending three schools at the same time. 
are, are, are you listening to me? I was at the University of Manitoba. I was at the University of Winnipeg. Running a certification course at the University of Winnipeg. And at the same time, I was at Addiction Foundation of Manitoba. Running my addiction counseling program there. Courses. And at the same time, I was at Mr. Cordia Hospital working. Full time. Day shift and night shift. And evening shift. <laughs> And that time my wife looks at me, I, 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 I'm, like, I'm like somebody just walking and walking and just, just <laughs> you understand my point? But that, that time, day and night I had, I pray. So my spiritual energy and favor, I did not allow it to, to die because I am hustling or because I'm walking. No. Because I know the spiritual, the importance of the spiritual and I know the importance of the physical. Are we together here now? Both of them must come together. Both of them must work together. And today I ask myself, how did I do it? I was, my wife will sit with me sometimes. I will say, this is the research I'm making. Please, can you help me just check the research out? While she's checking the research, I'm doing the other assignment. Because all of them have due date. How many of you can still resonate with due date? <laughs> you know due date. And sometimes I am uploading on, on my UM land. I am uploading as at 11.45 in the night. You guys know what I'm talking about. Stop looking at me like that. You know what I'm talking about. After you are, you are, you are, you are, you are doing literature review, you are interacting from one thing to the other. Because the first thing they will give you in, on the first day of school is to give you your course outline. Course outline. And that course outline, they have spelled everything out. There is no anointing that will make them not make... <laughs> <laughs> somebody say diligence. diligence somebody say diligence. diligence it is very very important now listen to this God is committed to blessing the work of our hands however diligence is work directed to the proper channel what is diligence work directed to the proper what channel if not, you will just be walking, 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 walking around the clock and there is no targeting. There is, you are not meeting a spiritual goal. You are not meeting a physical goal. Sometimes you meet physical goal. You are not able to get your spiritual goal. Sometimes you are meeting spiritual goal and all your physical goal is in disarray. You must harmonize them. They must come together. In this year of a new dawn, they must what? Come together and God, and that is why he said, you need a new spirit in order to package these things together. Propel you to a new dawn. Praise the Lord, somebody. I don't want, it to, I don't want us to be like that guy in Africa that was, has been doing everything to travel outside the shores of Africa. He did everything to travel and come to Canada, but he didn't have any international passport. And when the opportunity came, they asked him, where is your international passport? He said, wow, I forgot. I needed an international passport. So an international passport would take some days or some weeks. But then it will take maybe, let's say, two weeks. Some people can get it that same day. but you have to, So he had to do everything to get his passport that same day. Travel to another uh, state now, where here you will call it province. And then he traveled there and got his international passport that same day. If it were to be in Canada, you can't get it the same day. So what am I talking about here? In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27, in the Amplified Version of the Bible, it says, The lazy man does not cash and roast his prey. But the precious possession of a wise man is diligence because he recognizes opportunities and seizes them. Diligence is the wise man's precious possession. Diligence is the wise man's precious possession. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29. In the King James Version of the Bible, I will read it from two translations. But first of all, in the King James Version of the Bible, he says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before me men, before ordinary men. Let's read it from the New King James Version of the Bible. That same portion. 
Proverbs 22, verse 29. He said, do, he said, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Before unknown men. Diligence. Diligence. Is a precious, is the wise man's precious possession. Diligence. Show me somebody that is saying, oh God, I want you to use me. I want God to use me. But all through the day, he sleeps from morning till evening. No prayer, no fasting, no desiring God, no, no, no evangelizing and te telling people about God. Listen, God uses people that are ready for God to use. That are willing for God to use them. God cannot use you if all you do from morning till evening is to eat and eat and eat and eat and there is no space in your tummy and God is like, hey, if I need to use you, you are too heavy. You are too heavy. You are too weighty for me. Hello, somebody. So God is like, you need to be light so that I can put into you. I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat. <laughs> You know, we live in these days of social media. You can be misinterpreted anywhere. <laughs> but all I'm saying is that there is a price to pay for anything you want in life. There is a price to pay. So many years ago, I think this will be in the year 2001 or so. I, a sister was brought to the church by another lady back home in Africa. Brought by another lady to my office in the church and, and the sister said she needs a prayer of deliverance and all that and all that. I'm like, okay, we'll pray. We, we, we have what we call spiritual diagnosis. So you come first. It's just like triaging you. You get, you sit down. I get to talk with you and I get to spiritually spot what the issue is. Are you getting my point? So I, I said to, to them, bring her. And then she came on that day, we talked, and then everything, we did everything. We, I just, I said, okay. But this prayer, those of you who know how we run our deliverance uh, session in our deliverance school back home in Africa, it's a school. It's a school. So you will be in church for prayer for about three days. You, know, you are not going to sleep there, though. You will just be coming and going, but you will be fasting during the process. Now, I, we, we finished the date and then uh, she called on, on the morning, the morning of the very day that we are supposed to start her deliverance prayer. She said, ah, I'm very sorry, sir. Uh, uh, one of my sisters called me that she is going for a, a, an appointment. Uh, she just wants me to help her take care of her baby. So I, to help you, to help her look up, help you. Your sister wants you to help her look after the baby. He said, yes. Okay. And then I looked at her. I said, you are not, you, you're not serious. The devil has not dealt with you yet. You are not serious yet. You know, when you see someone that is hungry, have you seen somebody that is hungry? Oh, have you seen someone tasty? He wants to drink water. If you like, give him uh, cappuccino, or what do you call it? Give him a, which other one? Eh? Water. Give him wine. Give him anything. Okay, I mean, if he's thirsty for water and you give him any other liquid, he's, he, you have not satisfied his thirst. You've not satisfied her thirst. If someone is really hungry, on the way he will crave for food, when I look at some people, I tell them, you're not ready yet. So, she said, ah, I'm sorry, sir. I just want to take care of, uh, help, my, help my sister. I said, oh, God. All right, help your sister. And then I called the person that brought her. I said, that person is not serious. That person is not serious yet. When the person is ready for deliverance, she will come. I will not have to force you to come for it. You will, look, you will come for it. And then she called me the valley, sir, can I come today? I said, no. You can't come today. This is a spiritual thing. This is not, but I didn't just give you appointment time. I am giving you a spiritual timing. 
People think that things just happen. No. There is a spiritual dimension to everything. Diligence is what I'm talking about. Some people are not diligent for their own help. They are not diligent for their own life. They are not diligent for their own things. They are not. I told someone some years back, I said, you will need to fast for two days. You do it morning till afternoon for two days. They ah, sir. They said, I, 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 I have ulcer. I cannot fast. I said, the, the, I was also diagnosed with ulcer. My own was chronic ulcer. And the doctor said, measure a lot of things I shouldn't eat. The very day I received the diagnosis, that was the day I started my seven days fasting. And I didn't eat throughout that seven days. I just want the author to come and let's see the, what we, who we deal with. Who. If you are in need and you are craving, you are diligent to go after that thing, you will be amazed how you are. The, the, all the energy you need will come. Do you see somebody? Some time ago, I saw a joke. This was a joke. I saw it online and there was this guy they keep, kept telling, I mean this lady, they kept telling her, look, you need to be exercising. You need to be exercising. And you need to run, try, do your money routine, exercise. And she said, oh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And one day, there was fire in her apartment. There was serious fire in her apartment. And the fire alarm began to blare. She was the first one to be outside. And so her brothers and what, how did where did you pass through? She said, don't, he said, be asking. Be asking me how I got to that place. What am I trying to say? Some people don't take action until they see trouble. That sister, I did not attend to her that following day. There was a day she ran. She didn't wait for anybody to bring her to church. She came to my office by herself. She said she, she has not slept for four nights. Four days she has not been able to sleep. When she was there, I, I called Big Mommy. I said, she told me that there was mark all over her body. I told Big Mommy, check her. Truly, Big Mommy said, ah, this is serious witchcraft attack. Marks all over her body. What am I talking about? You need to be diligent. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. The hand of the diligence, the hand of the diligent, Proverbs chapter 12 verse 24, the hand of the diligent be a right to rule. From the NIV, Proverbs 12 verse 24, he said, diligent hands will rule. But laziness ends in forced labor. Are, are you with me? I'm not here to excite anybody. I'm just here to tell you the truth. What you need for a new dawn this year. King James Version said, The hand of the diligent beareth rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4, King James Version. He said, He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. That same verse in the Amplified Version said, I mean, Proverbs 10, verse 4 in the Amplified, he said, Poor is he who walks with a negligent and idle hand. But the hand of the diligent makes him rich. What am I trying to say? This year, you need a new kind of diligence. A new kind of passion. A new kind of dedication. Someone asked my father in the Lord so many years ago, what is dedication? His answer was this. Dedication is deadly commitment. Deadly commitment. To be so committed that nothing can sway you. Dedication. Com be committed to your vision. Be committed to your goal. Be committed to where you are going. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 13. The lazy person claims there is a lion in the road. Yes, I am sure there is a lion out there. The Living Bible Translation. 
in the message Bible translation, this will make you. you, you know, he, he, just, he just brought it home. He's, he called them loafers. He said, loafers say, it is dangerous out there. Tigers are prowling the streets. And then, pull the covers back over their heads. It suggests that they are still on the bed at this time. Proverbs chapter 26 from verse 14 and 15. Listen and listen carefully. Proverbs 26 verse 14 to 15. Just as the door turns its hinges, so a lazy bones turns back over his head. A shiftless sluggard puts his fork in the pie, but is too lazy to lift it to his mouth. Listen, everybody hear me. It is true we need a new dawn. Hard work is not equal to hard life. It's not equal to hard life. The only thing I will tell you is that give God his place. Give God his place. Give God his time. Give God his place. But work hard. Be diligent. Your diligence will be both spiritual and physical. God has never stopped anyone from working, sir. Can I repeat that, sir? God has never, God has never stopped anyone from working, ma. Sir, ma, God, is, God was not the one that told you not to work. Show it to me in scriptures. He never, Jesus said, my father is working, even so I am working. That is what Jesus said. Praise the Lord, somebody. That somebody wakes up in the morning and he said, I want to build my prayer life and he's waking up by 11 a.m. No, now. How do you build your prayer life? How? Slept all through the night, wake up 11. No. No. God is a worker. Jesus Christ came and he was working also. In fact, before the age of 30, where he started his full-time ministry, Jesus was full-time carpent into full-time carpentry with his father. John chapter 5 verse 17 in the NIV translation of the Bible. Hear this. In his defense, Jesus said to them, my father is always working. He is always at work. And to this very day, and I too I'm working. So what do we mean? What are we saying? What are we saying? Can work be tiring? Yes, work can be tiring. That's why it's called work. And that's why we need to be diligent. In 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 9, we also have the prophetic message I'm reading from the NIV now. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable. And you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. So we must do well to pay attention to it. We must do well to pay attention to it. You must work at the relationship. You must work at the marriage. You must work at the ministry. You must work at your post. You must work at that instrument. You must work at that, 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 that business. You must work at that gift, that talent, that ability that God has given to you. You must work at it. Work at it. Very, very important. Very, very important. Work at it. Work at it. There is something that makes people to wake up in the morning. No matter how tired they are, they jump up on their feet, hop into their car, or get in the bus, and they are going somewhere to work. But you must give God his place. I repeat, there is physical diligence, and there is what? Spiritual diligence. 
both of them must grow together. Can I pray for someone here? I release upon you grace for a new dawn. Oh, are, are you hearing me? I release upon you grace for a new dawn. I said I release upon you grace for a new dawn. In the name of Jesus Christ. May Jesus the morning star arise in your heart. Arise in our heart. And bet a new dawn again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Brother, you can play this keyboard very well, this piano. Most time when you are there, I, I am like, my goodness, this guy is good. Sometimes, you sit down and I send the hymn to you. Does the hymn, knowing the hymn, does it just jump into your head and you just know it? Sometimes you sit with it. Most, most, every time you sit with it. And you begin to look at it, and you are and, and all the do do so la la fa so. <laughs> I don't know all those things, mom. I'm telling you, I don't know them. But you you see it, and you give your time. Diligence require time. Diligence require energy. Diligence require your sometimes your effort. Many a times, not even sometimes, many times your effort is needed in diligence. There was a time I called somebody. I mean, the person came for prayer and deliverance. And then we were praying. I will, I will read out the prayer point. I will ask her to pray. I will be shouting. I will say, say this after me. Say, my father, my father. She will say, my father, my father. Okay. I, I did as if I didn't hear. I said, say, every witchcraft attack against my life. She said, every witchcraft attack against my life. And she do like this. Every witchcraft attack against my life. I'm like, I told her, come. Are you ready for this prayer? Because the last time I checked, the demons don't take it easy with you. And I am not the one that have demons. I'm not the one that need this thing. You are the one that need it. I can't be shouting louder than you. You have to free your spirit and be alive. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, he that the son set free is free. What? Indeed. It has to be an indeed kind of, of freedom. Praise the Lord, somebody. So, 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 so um, and then I left her. I said, pray. I went in the office, came back again. By the time I, I raised the, the next prayer point, she screamed. I said, uh -huh. you need to see when she began to pray. I said, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This is how to pray. You don't take it easy with the devil. The devil is very diligent. When the devil is on somebody's case, he stays on that person. Can, can't you see what happened in the land of Egypt? When Pharaoh was, in, 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 was oppressing them, everybody lift your hands if you are hearing me. If what I'm saying is, is resonating with you, can I see your hand? Aha! Uh -huh. Pharaoh, Moses went to Pharaoh. And said, Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, let my people go. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? Who is God? I am the only Lord here. And I am the only God here. What do you mean? Moses, get out. If you come to my presence again, I will remove your head. I will cut you off. Even when God said Moses again, God, Moses said, God, the last time he said he's going to kill me, God said, go back to him. I will deal with Pharaoh. I am the one. I will deal with him. The Look, when Moses got to the courtyard of Pharaoh, the Bible said Moses dropped his rod and his rod became a serpent. Pharaoh laughed and said, is that all you got? Is that all you got? The, the Bible said, the magicians of Egypt, all of them dropped their rod. All of them turned to serpents. Have you seen power? The devil doesn't take it easy with people. There was a time the devil killed a man, killed the wife, started killing the children, one after the other, with strange illnesses. Today, the daughter of that same woman that died has come up to a particular level and said, well, I don't pray all those kind of prayers anymore. 
I don't do all that anymore. All those prayer, you guys just pray fire, 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 fire. I don't know, don't pray out those prayers. Now I want to go to a now she wants to go to a church where she can just go in and the father will just worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. What are you talking about? Oh, the prayer that rescued you from the death that ravaged your family. By the mercies of God. Oh, you don't need it anymore. That is why. That is how some people give room for the devil to return and start. And they will say, God didn't deliver me. And they start blaming God again. Meanwhile, they are the one who stepped out of the spiritual umbrella and covering. People cause problems for themselves and they come to blame God. And in fact, you need to see them when they are talking to pastors. Your, your, you see, your boss. <laughs> hey, Jehovah. Somebody say diligence. I, I didn't hear you well. Say diligence. Some time ago, I just came into Canada and there was a friend of mine. They gave, him, they gave her a um, caretaker of, a, of, of an apartment building. The owners of the apartment came one day. There was snow everywhere. The so-called, my friend, caretaker, was sleeping. And the whole compound was all messed up. What do you expect? It's Canada. They fired him on this, fired her on the spot. You are not, you can't do this job, and you say you can do it. Are we together here? Stand up to your feet. Diligence. 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 Be diligent. Do you know the Bible said, do not be weary in what? Well doing. Well doing. For in due time you shall reap if you faint not. The word well doing and the word faint not. Those two are very important. So while you are doing the do and you are committed to being diligent, you must continue it. You must continue it. Praise the Lord somebody. Praise the Lord somebody. Can you tell your neighbor, say, don't take it easy with the devil. Because he doesn't take it easy with you. Don't take it easy with the devil. Lift up your hands, say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I receive fire. I receive the passion of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost to keep moving. To be diligent, to be faithful in well doing, in the mighty name of Jesus. Makala bashada bada kasayada, robo kusote legeli ada bakata. Dekisama. That is why I cannot take it easy when people come late to church. I can't take it easy because I know the environment where we are in. Once it is when you are to resume by six thirty. By six, you are out of your house. You are out of your house. Mala de Gebo Shata Katayada. Teach your children hard work. Tell them it is not equal to hard life. Tell yourself, I want to build my spirit man. I want God to use me. Some time ago, I was in, engaged, very engaged when I was just a new Christian that time. I just a new Christian. I was like, God, I want to build my prayer life. I want to build my prayer life. Every of my brothers and sisters, they will sleep on the bed. Some will sleep on the couch. Me, I will sleep on the floor. Bend. And the space I will sleep was very tiny little space. Because if I, keep, if I want to stretch my leg, my leg will hit a couch. And then I will open my eyes. It's already time to start praying in the night. Ah, in the name of Jesus. That is why that is why today prayer is like food and drink for me. It's like air that I breathe. You cannot just always be the man, I'm a big guy, I'm a big guy and then you want to be the one. Look, you must be 
committed. You must be dedicated. You must be diligent in what you are doing. Be diligent. Be diligent. Be diligent. Can you tell two people? Go tell two people. Say, you must be diligent. Say, you must be diligent. Diligent. 